Today, we're gonna do one of the most controversial things you can do in the Apple community, and that is ranking every iPhone from the worst to the best. Yes, it's gonna be entirely subjective. There's no objective way to really rank these. With that said, I think we'll find plenty of common ground together once you actually see my list. As always, I'd love to know what your list would have been. Keep in mind, I'm only gonna reviewing flagship level models as it makes the comparison far more streamlined and easier to do, and it kind of takes away the different levels or tiers we have within the iPhone ecosystem. Ecosystem. So without further ado, starting from the very worst to the best, let's get started. At the very bottom of the barrel has to be the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. For the fourth generation in a row, Apple had recycled the iPhone 6 design, which was truly ridiculous in my opinion. Granted, there were minor modifications like a glass back, but this phone really had nothing to brag about. Aside from the fact that it did offer wireless charging, which wasn't in any previous iPhone. I know it was a little late to the game, but that was literally the only addition the iPhone 8 made. It was also overshadowed by the iPhone 10, which didn't do any favors for it. Literally, this was one of the most mundane iPhone releases to date. It's the most unsung iPhone I can think of on this list, hence why it's ranked at the bottom. If the iPhone 8 was the most mundane iPhone, then the XS is by far the most boring iPhone. This thing literally had zero new features compared to the iPhone 10. Literally. I mean, its biggest feat was the fact that they introduced the max size iPhone 10s, which of course was bigger, but pretty much everything else was exactly the same aside from incremental upgrades that we get every year, like a better processor and improved camera specifications like smart HDR capability. But aside from that, the only redeeming factor for the iPhone 10s was the fact that it came in a gorgeous gold color, which I still think is one of the best color iterations Apple has made to date. The iPhone 4S was what I like to call a one trick pony. Its biggest and only unique feature was Siri. And let's just be honest, Siri was, well, it was kind of an afterthought at that point in time. And fast forward a decade and some later, and Siri is still only marginally better than it was in my opinion back then. Now putting that aside, the iPhone 4S literally had no other tricks up its sleeves. So it was just basically an enhanced iPhone 4, which of course what the S iterations usually are. Granted though, it did have a significantly improved camera system and it also did fix Apple's antenna gate issue with the original iPhone 4. Next up, we have a victim of timings, the iPhone 3GS. While the iPhone 3G had already brought faster data speeds, well, hence the word 3G, and speculations about the iPhone 4's upgraded design were already kinda in the rumor mill, the 3GS didn't really get a time to shine, even though it did bring some practical improvements, like being a considerably smoother experience compared to the sluggish iPhone 3G, thanks to its highly upgraded processing capabilities. The iPhone 6S was pretty much an iPhone 6, but it was just better. I know that's a gross oversimplification, but essentially you had optical image stabilization with the 6S Plus model. Additionally, you had better battery life and a significantly faster touch ID system. Now putting those aside, it was a pretty low key upgrade, but it did have one golden feature at the time, which was 3D touch. And trust me, the trailers made it look so cool. Unfortunately, Apple could never really have this feature take off with its end users, eventually to the point where they phased it out with the iPhone 11. The iPhone 5 represented Apple's more stubborn side. So essentially, while every other competitor was now making larger phones, Apple opted to be hell-bent on the statement that smartphones should be a single hand-friendly device. Their solution was to make the iPhone 4 essentially taller and bring a more vertically longer screen. So what you basically got was an extra layer or an extra row of app icons. But past that, the iPhone 5 also felt like a downgrade materialistically because unlike the glass glass and stainless steel build of the iPhone 4 and 4S, the 5 had an aluminum frame, which again just didn't feel as premium in contrast. But to its credit, the iPhone 5 did introduce the lightning port connector, which for better or worse, we still use today. And it also had the founding father design of the modern day AirPods, the wired AirPods that came included with the phone. While the iPhone 5S may have shared the same stubbornness of Apple resisting industry trends with smaller phones, one thing that made the iPhone 5S a colossal success, at least in the long term, was Touch ID. It was the first iteration to have it, and Touch ID was such a loved and in fact useful feature that several iterations of the iPhones after that would still have it and we still find modern day products like MacBooks, iPads and Apple's own Magic Keyboard that still have an implementation of Touch ID. That's how amazing that technology was. Also worth noting, the iPhone 5S did introduce 64-bit applications to iOS. The iPhone 
6 and 6 Plus were by far the most anticipated phone both by Apple lovers and haters alike because this would be the first time we would see Apple finally depart from their philosophy of a smartphone being a single-handed device. In their own hypocrisy, Apple had finally realized that industry pressure was mounting and they had to introduce a larger 6 Plus model. Of course, the new iPhone 6 introduced a brand new curvy design which was a visible departure from the more linear designs we had seen with the previous four generations of iPhones. But not just that, the Max was the first time we saw a dramatic bump in resolution since the iPhone 4, introducing a full HD or 1080p display, which of course was a welcome sight. Now, the 6 did have other problems like Bengate, which was a total PR disaster for Apple, and also the fact that iOS was quite choppy because a lot of the apps had to be readjusted for the new resolution on the iPhone. The iPhone 11 Pro is one of the most well-respected iPhones in recent history. For good reason, it brought a lot of practical upgrades that users have been asking for a long time. It improved the battery life significantly, it had a faster processor, more RAM, additionally we got a ultra-wide third camera, and also a considerably brighter screen. All these are visible, tangible features that were asked for for quite some time and Apple delivered. And the iPhone 11 Pro is a living example that when Apple wants to listen to its consumers and actually implement stuff they're saying, they definitely can. Now granted, the iPhone 11 Pro's only setback was the fact that it was now recycling the iPhone 10 design for the third generation in a row. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus were also what I consider to be really practical upgrades. They introduced the A10 4-core Fusion chip, which brought respectable improvements to iOS. Additionally, they had a slightly better screen with a wider color gamut, improved speaker systems, and better battery efficiency, which translated slightly better battery life. But the real star of the show was the iPhone 7 Plus, which for the first time introduced a dual camera module where you had a telephoto lens and a wide lens in a single module piece. Quite respectable and if that was enough they also introduced the gorgeous jet black color which unfortunately was highly flawed because this thing would attract scratches the minute you took it out of the box. The iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max were feature-rich phones, so they had a full redesign and went back to a more linear design language the likes of which we had not seen since the iPhone 5S days. They had gorgeous OLED panels that were absolutely stunning to look at, 5G capability, and upgraded camera systems, particularly on the 12 Pro Max, which had a new optical image stabilization technology inbuilt and made for some exceptional low-light photography. It's also worth noting we saw Apple's MagSafe technology and will with the 12 series in general, and it's been moderately successful, all things considered. The biggest setback with the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max was the fact that they were still using primitive 60 hertz displays, while the rest of the competition had moved well beyond that refresh rate. It was kind of embarrassing for Apple at that point in time, to be honest, and they did get a lot of fair criticism for it. The iPhone 13 Pro took everything we loved about the 12 Pro and added everything we wanted on top of that. So we finally got 120 hertz displays on both the Pro models. The camera system was further upgraded and this time the upgrade made its way down to the standard 5.8 h Pro model as well. A slightly smaller notch, which again is just ever so slightly smaller, but also improved battery life and a louder speaker system. All of these changes were welcomed and they definitely made the iPhone 13 Pro one of the most desirable iPhones you can own. And believe me when I say it was one of the most comprehensive updates we've seen to an iPhone in recent history. Of course, there are still some bones to pick, like the fact we're still using the now severely outdated lightning port as opposed to USB-C, or the fact, of course, that Touch ID hasn't made its much anticipated return to iPhones yet, but all of those are claims that hopefully can be fixed with future revisions. The iPhone 10 was one of the most anticipated design changes since pretty much the original iPhone, for good reason. It did away with the home button and Touch ID and replaced it with a whole new design, including a 5.0-inch nearly bezel-less OLED panel. Because the Touch button or the home button was now gone, we had to re learn how to navigate iOS, but Apple did such a bang on job that it felt like a nearly seamless process. We were also introduced to the likes of Face ID technology, which is still used on the latest iPhone.
iPhones. Yes, the iPhone 10 hosted the very much controversial notch, which is still actually found on the latest generation of iPhones today. But the fact was the iPhone 10 was one of the most wowing iPhones we had seen, if for nothing else, but it's absolutely stunning design. When Steve Jobs and Co introduced the original iPhone back in 2007, they definitely took the breath of the world away. And for good reason, the iPhone proved the future of smartphones was in fact a touchscreen. It proved that you could have a proficient and user-friendly operating system that could do all the things you could do with traditional phones, whether it's web browsing, making phone calls, sending text messages, or using the camera. All of that in a convenient portable body that needed nothing more but your fingers to actually function. The iPhone forever changed the way smartphones would be going forward. Thanks to the iPhone, we saw some amazing competition from some other amazing companies from the likes of Samsung, from the likes of LG, from the likes of Sony, and so many other brands out there. The iPhone literally was the founding father of the modern day smartphone design, and so much credit is due to it for that alone. At the very top of the list is the iPhone 4. If for nothing else, for the sheer fact that the iPhone 4 was one of the most well-crafted, most majestic and beautiful looking designs we've seen from Apple to date. Everything about it from that beautiful glass surface finish to that stainless steel band made it look so nice. In fact, the iPhone 4 is still considered to be a modern looking 4, so much so that the iPhone 12 and 13 actually reverted back to its design style, but not just that, the iPhone 4 also introduced the ever so gorgeous retina display, which at the time was an absolute pleasure to look at. It also made subtle improvements in performance with the A4 chip and of course with the camera as well. But the iPhone 4 truly was a testament of everything Apple stood for, which was craftsmanship, quality and attention to detail, and just sheer creativity. Unfortunately, we can't have it all in this world and the iPhone 4 was plagued with the antenna gate problem. The stainless steel bands kind of got in the way of the antennas, which led to poor reception. It was quite a PR nightmare for Apple and they eventually issued free bumper cases. But despite this flaw, the iPhone 4 is deeply regarded as one of the most beautiful designs we've seen from Apple to date, bar to none. And it kind of redefined what a premium smartphone Phone should look like. So shout out to the iPhone 4. So if you haven't killed me yet, that means you kind of like my list or you're writing a comment right now telling me how darn wrong I am. In either case, I'd love to read your comments and see what you think about my list and what your list would be ranking all the flagship iPhones from worst to best. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some degree of entertainment from this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and consider subbing to our channel. It genuinely helps us grow and means the world to us. Catch you in the next one.